Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, my name is Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at places like garage sales, thrift stores, anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for January 14th through 20th. Let's dive right in. But before we get started, I want to make a quick announcement that we're going to be giving away a t-shirt on every What Sold video. To enter, simply drop a comment below and make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. We'll pick from one of the comments and announce the winner on our next What Sold video, so make sure that you tune in to find out whether or not you won. Alright, let's start. The first thing that sold this week was a 2005 Fisher Price Little People Nativity Replacement Donkey. This one was the one with the yellow blanket. There are two donkeys in the nativity set, so you do have to make note of which one is the one with the yellow blanket or the white blanket, and we've sold both. We actually sell replacement pieces for this nativity set all the time. So if you find pieces, it's worth picking up, and if you can find a complete nativity set, that will definitely sell. This came from a thrift store toy bag. We paid 19 cents for it, and it sold for $9.99. Next up was a pair of My Old Jeans by the brand Vanilla Star. They were boot cut denim jeans and they sold for $19.54. Next up were two art prints by the artist Larry Dyke. These came from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. These sold for $70 even on best offer. Next up was a new sealed Gandhi VHS, and that came from a garage sale for $2.50, which is a lot, but I think that was like a bulk purchase. We just like purchased a bunch of stuff at that garage sale and then just divided the total by the number of items that we bought. That VHS sold for $8.08. .08. So considering that cost of goods, like not a lot of profit, but I'm sure that garage sale has already paid for itself. Next up was a book called Vintage Ideas, Inventions, and Patents by Robert A. Buckles. And that was purchased at a garage sale for a dollar and it sold for $11.18 on offer to buyer. Next up was a vintage 1940s, 1950s lot of five recipe booklets. This came from a garage sale for $2 and it sold for $24.99. Next up was a 1979 Cummins C-shaped belt buckle. That came from an estate sale for $5 and it sold for $39.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was four Blue's Clues VHS. These we got at a rummage sale. I think these came from a church rummage sale and we had purchased a lot of VHS at this rummage sale. Rummage sale, that word is hard for me to say. <laughs> we paid a dollar in total for all of them. I think we must have paid 25 cents a piece for each of the VHS that day. And these sold for $14 even. Next up was a vintage lot of 121 Various Craftsman, Bonnie, Sparta, Husky, Powercraft, and Thorson sockets. We got those at a garage sale for $20 and they sold for $59.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was a set of vintage 1950s Marcrest Daisy Dot Sugar and Creamer. We got this at a different church rummage sale and we had paid $2 for those. They sold for $22.50. And I picked up several pieces from this particular set, the Marcrest Daisy Dot. And we've sold, I think this is either the second or third item to sell, so I'm definitely going to pick up the uh, pieces from this set if I ever see them in the future because they've sold well. Next up was something from that storage unit. This was a lot of two Chromebook computers. They were different brands. One of them was Dell and one of them was Acer. We didn't have cords for them. We had no idea if they worked, so we did sell them for parts or repair only. We paid $1.16 for these and they sold for $54.55 on auction. Next up was another item from that storage unit. This was a lot of two flip phones. One was Samsung and one was Nokia. These were also for parts or repair. We did not know if they worked. 
we paid a dollar and sixteen cents and they sold only for nine dollars and ninety nine cents on auction next up was a ralph lauren golf button-up shirt this came from a thrift store a long time ago we have had this one for a long time we paid four dollars and two cents for this and it sold for sixteen dollars even on best offer next up was a uh, a mistake <laughs> This was a Keurig coffee water filter assembly and eight filter cartridges. These were um, all new in package. We had gotten these at an estate sale a long time ago. Um, and actually we um, had picked these up and put these in a bag at that estate sale and like accidentally did not pay for this particular bag. So yeah, we accidentally stole these from the estate sale. <laughs> I mean, we really did not mean to, and had we even realized it before we got, like, home and ha had been able to, like, go back and pay for it, we totally would have, but by the time we realized it, it was way too late. It was, like, days later or something, and we had no idea, like, how we could make it right. So, yeah, we did totally accidentally <laughs> steal these from an estate sale, but karma had its way of, like, working itself around because... These have been listed for a really, really, really long time and they weren't selling. And so one thing that we do every year is to do an annual inventory. The way we do that is we go literally through every bin, every shelf in our inventory room and we look at everything on eBay and make sure it's still listed. We do find some mistakes that way. Not very many mistakes, but we like, you know, things that are not listed or things that are listed and we don't actually have anymore. Like there are very few mistakes like that, but it's a really good way to double check that. And the other thing that we do is things that have been listed for six months or longer, we end them and then do sell similar. And that really helps to get things moving in your store to do that because eBay sees that as a brand new listing. And so that's why some of the things that we've been um, ending and doing sell similar on that we've had in our store for maybe like two years or longer, we are really trying to flush out some of those items. So basically we're making a decision and we're marking a lot of the stuff for garage sale and we're going to pull a lot of it out in the springtime and sell it in a garage sale. And so those items that are marked for garage sale we're pricing them in a different way and trying to reach a new audience because most of our stuff we have priced with free shipping. It works better for us. It's just the way we prefer to do it. But we do realize that that does limit the types of people who are looking at our items because some people don't like to do it with free shipping and some people only look at stuff that's plus shipping. So sometimes it just pricing your items differently will get a new set of eyes on them. So the stuff that we're marking for garage sale for the most part, we're repricing it with a very low price, turning off best offer and adding calculated shipping. That is getting new sets of eyes on our items. So over the last couple of what solds, when we do sell items in that way, those are items that we have ended, done sell similar and repriced that way. And it is helping some of our items to move, but just the practice of ending and sell similar is helping items to move just in the general sense of doing that. But anyway, Karma came back on this item that we accidentally stole and I had ended it and relisted it and set it for a low price plus shipping or so I thought, but I had accidentally set it to free shipping. So <laughs> we set it for a low price plus free shipping. So we were like, oh no, we're gonna like lose money on this. But anyway, Kevin ended up like figuring out how to like magically pack it in some way so that we like barely eked out a profit. So that was a lot of story for, um, <laughs> for that one item. But I wanted to tell you guys anyway about how we do our annual inventory and how we end and relist items and why it's totally worth it to do that every year. So if that's not something that you guys are already doing, I would very much recommend it. We always do it in January just because that's the time of the year that, you know, we're, it's after fourth quarter. It's when we're looking at things, you know kind of starting our year over, but you can do that at any time of the year. Okay, so next up 
is a 1973 Singer Professional Buttonholer. It was complete with the box. We got this at the Goodwill bins for a dollar and three cents and it sold for $26.99. Next up was a lot of four Wallace stainless Kensington dinner forks. We got these at a rummage sale for two dollars and they sold for $21.74. Next up was a lot of four Shein small ribbed knit cropped tube tops. These were my daughter's and those sold for $8.98, which, you know, they were Shein. What do you expect? <laughs> Next up was something from that storage unit. This was a vintage Annie brass hot hair straightening pressing comb. It did have some damage on the handle. We included that right in the title. This we paid $1.16 for and it sold for $20.73. Next was another item from that storage unit. This was a Fujifilm Disney Frozen 2 Instax mini tin sheets of instant film new in the package. We paid $1.16 for that and it sold for $15.18 on offer to buyer. Next up was yet another item from that storage unit. You're definitely going to see a theme in this uh, what sold. This was a lot of 17 broken cell phones for parts or repair. And if you have not watched that video to see the um, crazy amount of cell phones that we got, definitely check that out. This, these we paid $1.16 for and these sold for $36.40. Next up was a J. Crew women's ivory wool pea coat. It did have some staining and wear on it. We disclosed that. We got this at the Goodwill bins for 92 cents and it sold for $39.98. Next up was a vintage 1994 Applause Looney Tunes Marvin the Martian hand puppet. It was new with the tags. We got this at a garage sale for $5 and it sold for $17 even on best offer. Next up was a 2017 Buzz Lightyear posable figure. We got this out of a thrift store toy bag for 21 cents and it sold for $7.98. Next up was a Chico Traveler's black cowl neck shirt. Chico's Traveler's items, specifically the Traveler's collection, sells really well. We do not do well with Chico's stuff otherwise, but Chico's Traveler's does great. Uh, this we got at a garage sale for $2 and it sold for $26 even. Next up was a 1993 Upper Deck Fun Pack baseball card of the player Juan Gonzalez and it was a checklist. This was Kevin's. It sold for $2.79. Next up was a lot of three Chick-fil-A I Can Read books. We got these out of the Goodwill bins. We paid $0.67 cents and they sold for $11.20. Next up was a pair of My Old Shoes by a brand called Jambu. These were leather open toe heels and those sold for $19.98. And they were actually really comfortable, but I never wore them. Next up was a 2015 Barbie pop-up camper replacement chair. This came out of that doll buy from Facebook Marketplace. I paid 67 cents for it and it sold for $11.18. Next up was a really cute little silver penguin coin bank and that came from a thrift store for $1.61 and it sold for $20 even. Next up was a Southern Living Christmas Cookbook and Year Round Celebration Book. This came from a garage sale for $1.50 and it sold for $17.98. Next up was a really cute Flamingo Jelly Cat New with Tags Plush. This sold on Mercari and we had found this in the Goodwill bin, surprisingly. Definitely be on the lookout for Jelly Cat Plush. Some Jelly Cat Plush can sell for a lot. This we paid $0.67 cents for and it sold for $32 even and that was on best offer. Next up was a 2014 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. It was a Paul Frank Best Friends bracelet and it was new in the package. We got that at the Goodwill bins for 67 cents and it sold for $6. And this was just something we were trying to like get out of our store and recoup some of our costs. So we did lose some money on this one, but I guess I look at it as we recouped 50 cents of the 67 cents that we spent. So I'd consider that a win. 
Next up was a print by the artist James Bama. This was called At a Mountain Man Wedding. James Bama is definitely an artist that you want to be on the lookout for for art prints because some of his art prints can go for like $800. This one, not as valuable. It did sell for $178.19 though. Next up was a Volex power cord and it was, um, I think this maybe came off of a VCR or, so or something, but it had like a European plug with a US adapter. It was like a real specific plug. I think I had bought a VCR at a garage sale. This plug was on it. I had purchased it obviously for the VCR and then the VCR didn't work or we decided not to list the VCR for whatever reason. So we just ended up parting it out. So my cost on this was $5 because that's how much I paid for the VCR, but we just ended up only using the plug off of this. So this plug ended up selling for $10.99 and technically we lost $0.88 cents on this purchase, but you know we were trying to recoup some of the cost on that VCR because it was a bad buy and I can't uh, recall exactly why it was a bad buy now. Uh, next up was a simplicity sewing pattern for a jacket dress top and pants, a full outfit, and it was uncut. We got that at a garage sale for 50 cents and it sold for $6.99. Next up was a wristwatch, needed a battery. We sold it as is. We got that at a garage sale for 50 cents and it sold for $20. Next up was a Cabbage Patch Kid girl doll and she was wearing an original Cabbage Patch doll shirt. That came from a bulk buy of Cabbage Patch dolls that I made off of Facebook Marketplace. I paid $4.44 for the doll and it sold for $23.98. Next up was a pair of Tom's Polka Dot Open Toe Cork Wedge Sandals. We found these in the Goodwill bins for $1.18 and they sold for $25.49. Next up was a John Hart lime green zipper pouch. It was personalized. Um, John Hart is definitely a brand you want to be on the lookout for. Most John Hart items are personalized, but um, you can have the personalization uh, redone or like replaced on a lot of John Hart items. So you can still sell items that have like personalization on them. I'm not sure I said that. <laughs> very articulately, but I think you get what I mean. We found this at a thrift store on Dollar Day, so we paid a dollar and eight cents for it, a dollar plus tax, and this sold for $15 even. Next up was a hot pink fossil wallet. We got this gifted to us to sell by a family member, so we had no cost, and it sold for $15 and 18 cents. Next up was some of Kevin's, um, baseball cards. These were 1994 Upper Deck Collector's Choice Silver Signature cards and actually it was just one card I think and it sold for $2.79. Next up was a black and orange chevron infinity scarf. We found a bunch of these scarves like this one and then some of a different design at the Goodwill bins. We paid 67 cents for each of them and this one sold for $9.23. Next up was a lot of nine Kinder Joy surprise animal figures. We found this in a thrift store toy bag for 18 cents and these sold for $15.99. Next up was a PIY painting, which is a really weird name to me, but this was a condenser microphone kit. It, um, I don't know if it was new. I don't think we listed it as new, but it was, it had the original box. It was in really nice condition. We got that at a garage sale for $9 and it sold for $47.99. Next up was a two pack of Burt's Bees. Uh, it included lip balm, hand salve, cuticle cream. It was all new in the box. We got this at um, Big Lots on clearance. We paid $4.35 for it. A long time ago, these just would not sell, so eventually we sold this for $9.74 at a loss, so that was just not a good buy, and we did lose money on that deal. Next up was a men's tie by the brand Envoy. This was a paisley all-over print made in the USA tie. This came from the 
Facebook Marketplace garbage bags that I got for $50. We paid $0.67 cents for each of the items from those bags and this tie sold for $7 on Poshmark. Next up was an art print called Heads Up by the artist Jerry Newman. This was a Ducks Unlimited print. These prints typically sell for a lot more and we have several of these but the ones that we have are damaged so they are selling for significantly less than one would in good condition. This sold for $29.69. Next up was a National Geographic magazine. This came from the someone who was giving away magazines on the Nextdoor app, so we had no cost, and this one sold for $14.99. Next up was a Dooney and Burke purse. We got this at a garage sale for $3.98, and it sold for $45.78. Next up was two Ion Bright Bluetooth speakers. They were both new. These came off of that palette Bad Buy, and our cost on these was $94.36. These sold for a total of $59.45, so we definitely lost money on this. Talking about the palette in general, I think we actually only have two items left to sell from the palette. One item we're definitely going to sell, it's a small item, and the other item I think we've decided we're going to take out of our inventory and try to use for personal use. So we are going to be totally done with that palette as soon as we sell that last item, I cannot wait. Okay, next up was a vintage 1984 LA Olympics collector pin. We got this at an estate sale when I did like a big bulk buy of mostly baseball pins, but this one was also in there. I paid $2.35 for it and it sold for $12.99. Next up was a Fab Lab pink plush stuffed animal organic big buddy bunny new with the tags. We got this doing retail arbitrage at Marshall's. I paid $7 for it on clearance and it sold for $34.38. Next up was a 148 piece mostly mega blocks lot and it had all kinds of like you know animal types of pieces and um, specialty pieces in it that weren't just like the plain mega blocks. And we had gotten that at a garage sale for $5 and it sold for $31.98. Next up was a B&N Classic Fairy Tales book uh, by Hans Christian Andersen. We got that at a thrift store for $2.70 and it sold for $39.99. Next up was another item from that storage unit. This was the Amazon Fire Stick. We got that for $1.16 and it sold for $32.28 on Offer to Buyer. Next up was, actually the la all the rest of the items are from the storage unit, so I'm not going to say it <laughs> anymore. Next up was a lot of two seashells. These were conch seashells and we had paid $1.16 for those and they sold for $14.99. And last up was a lot of 29 Barbies and actually some of these Barbies came from other places like I had been collecting them for a while. We had gotten some out of the bin, some out of thrift store toy bags, but the majority of them came out of that unit. Uh, so our out-of-pocket cost on these was $2.78 and these sold for $39.99. So that wraps up everything and let's go over the totals. So this week we sold 57 items. Our average sale price was $25.56. Our sales totaled $1,456.95 for a net profit of $640.43. So you can see that we are actually selling a large number of sales. Our average sale price is not that high because we have been lowering our prices a little bit on stuff and we are trying to clear some stuff out at some lower prices. However, as the weeks go on and as we continue to do wet solds, you'll see that like our, our sales are like going up and up and up. Like we have really been going crazy on sales and I attribute it to almost exclusively to doing the end item and sell similar because that really, really has gotten our sales moving. So 
Maybe we should be doing that twice a year. I don't know. It is extremely labor intensive and takes a lot of time, but I do feel like that the payoff is huge. So that is something to definitely consider to boost your sales, especially if you're running low on inventory. That's something that you can do to get your sales moving, get more activity in your eBay store. So something to consider. But if you enjoyed this video, please let me and YouTube know by hitting the like button. Also make sure that you comment below so you can win a Nina's Jewels t-shirt. Make sure that you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on whether or not you won and also on our future content. All right, thanks again for joining and we will catch you guys on the flip side.